okay, class. I know addition is boring, but H A L L O we is coming up. Isn't this worksheet so cute and fun? Who's dressing up for Halloween? Already have. This year, the temperature be rising. Ooh, I'm sizzling. I'm getting a little plump. Ooh, I'm gonna get me a red hot dress. Kool-Aid! Yo, You, right there, are gonna explore the heck out of these numbers. Sensei. All right, listen carefully, you pumpkin face first graders. You ain't exploring any neighborhoods for candy until you explore my numbers first. You feel me? Obviously, the skit was a little over the top, but I want to introduce a book called The Teaching Gap by Dr. James Stigler. This research based book was first published in 1999 and illustrates the classroom differences between Germany, Japan, and the United States, and how we can learn from other countries to make math education better. And although the book is 20 years old, it's definitely still relevant to this day, and having experienced school in both Japan and the United States, I totally understand where the author is coming from. If you're anyone like me and curious about how math education is taught in different countries, his original book is called The Learning Gap. This one studies the differences between China, Japan, and the United States. I highly, highly recommend picking up either of these books. As always, my intent is not to put down the American system, schools, or teachers in any way. My hope and wish is to communicate a message that would help improve our current state of math education. So one of the central themes to this book, The Teaching Gap, is that teaching is cultural. And yes, Japanese and US math teachers have a totally different opinion on how math should be taught and learned. So let's start with the American viewpoint first. Let's go! Based on the study where teachers were asked what main thing they wanted their students to learn, 61% of American teachers said they wanted their students to be able to do a specific skill. As you can see from the problems assigned by the teacher, it's three addition problems that require following a set procedure. Not hard, maybe easy, but nonetheless, just practicing procedures. So in order to gain student interest in learning these so-called procedures, teachers manufacture the idea of fun through divergence outside of mathematics. As you can see, the printout included Halloween themed pictures and the teacher luring their students with candy to say that math class is fun. Now let's look at the viewpoint of Japanese teachers. Let's go! And in the same study, 73% of teachers said they wanted their students to see relationships, think about things in a new way, and see relationships between mathematical ideas. So this was a rather simple first grade problem, but one that leaves room for exploration and discussion. This, in the mind of Japanese teachers and myself, is the idea of real fun, where students are trying different number combinations to find the solution. Teachers in Japan are less likely to motivate their students by linking non-mathematical concepts to their lessons, like adding unnecessary pictures to their pronouns. So once you have students explore with numbers, they might still be a little bit confused because remember, they are first graders. So let's drop them some hints. A few hints could be adding the four smallest numbers together or adding the four biggest numbers. Well, if we do that, the four smallest numbers is gonna equal 10 and the four biggest numbers is gonna equal 18. Then you can ask them, hmm, what does that tell us about the number in the tens digit? Well, because we're picking the four smallest or the four biggest numbers, and both of the, these answers are one, 
the only logical answer for the tens digit has to be one. So if we knock that off, students can again explore with the other five numbers. So once we do that, we can say that the four and the six equal 10, two and the three equal five for a total of 15. So your answer is going to be two plus three plus four plus six equals 15. As Dr. Stigler states in his books, the learning gap is already starting from first grade and only gets wider while students reach fourth grade and beyond. Please subscribe to my channel and help me get U.S. math scores where it needs to be. Thank you.